And it is 7 o'clock on the East Coast, which means polls have just closed in half a dozen states. The most closely watched state at this hour is Georgia, which President Trump almost certainly needs to win if he's to secure a second term. As of this moment, too early to project a winner in this crucial battleground. It's also too early to make a call in Kentucky. Meanwhile, Biden will defeat Trump in the Commonwealth of Virginia, according to our decision desk. And the former vice president will also win in the state of Vermont. No big surprise there in the early part of this evening. We will need to look at more data before we can make a projection in the state of South Carolina. And in the state of Indiana, where Trump has enjoyed a lead over Biden in the pre-election polling, also not quite ready to make a call in Indiana. Let's turn now to the Senate, control of which uh, is very much up, in the gra up for grabs tonight. The most interesting state to watch at this hour is Georgia. The only place in the country that has not one but two Senate races on the ballot. Either of those could help determine control of the chamber. But here's the kicker. We might not find out who will fill either of those Senate seats until January. That's because of a Georgia state law requiring candidates to win more than 50 percent of the vote tonight or face a runoff election nine weeks from today. And in the regularly scheduled Georgia Senate race, incumbent Republican David Perdue is battling Democrat John Ossoff and Libertarian Shane Hazel. As of this moment, it is way too early to project who will get the most votes there, much less whether if anyone will exceed the 50 percent level they need to avoid the runoff. It's a similar story in Georgia's special Senate election, where Republican Senator Kelly Loeffler is facing challenges from a variety of candidates, including Reverend Raphael Warnock, a Democrat, and Congressman Doug Collins, a Republican. We cannot yet make a call in the South Carolina race between Republican incumbent Lindsey Graham and Democratic challenger Jamie Harrison, who managed to throw really a scare into Graham during this hard-fought campaign. A lot of money going into that South Carolina race. Could be a long time before we actually make a call in that race. Well, it only took a few seconds, but the Fox News decision desk can now project. President Trump will defeat former Vice President Joe Biden in the state of Kentucky. Not a surprise there. But the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is up for election there. Uh, he was leading going into today. We'll see where that race uh, heads in Kentucky as far as the Senate Majority Leader's fate. It is 7.30 p.m. on the East Coast, which means polls have just closed in three more states, including two considered must-wins for President Trump's re-election. First and foremost, Ohio, the biggest prize of the hour, 18 electoral votes that frankly are considered more crucial to President Trump than Joe Biden as far as getting to 270. Candidates locked in a tight race in the Buckeye State. The Fox News decision desk will need a lot of time probably to analyze more voting data before declaring a winner there. However, it's not too early to project that President Trump will easily defeat Joe Biden in the state of West Virginia, one of the most pro-Trump states in America, so no big surprise there tonight. Also in West Virginia, the Fox News decision desk can now project that Republican Senator Shelley Moore Capito will turn back a challenge from Democrat Paula Jean Swearingen. Well, we have a race to call, and that is for the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. We can now project that he will win that Senate race against Amy McGrath, the Democrat. She spent $73.4 million on this race. Uh, it will, we're looking at it not being that close. Uh, and Mitch McConnell will go on to another term. We just don't know whether he will be Senate Majority Leader or Senate Minority Leader by the end of the process tonight. It's 8 o'clock here in New York City. Polls have just closed in another 16 states. Let's begin with the big prize, Florida, the biggest electoral prize of this hour and a must-win state for President Trump if he is to secure a second term. The Fox News decision desk is currently pouring over a lot of voting data from the Sunshine State, a lot of actual votes plus what we know from voter analysis, but it's not ready to project a winner there. Very tight, uh, as expected, in Florida as we wait for the rest of that to come in. And while Joe Biden could win the presidency without Florida, he would have a much tougher time without Pennsylvania, where both candidates have focused so ferociously over the course of the last several days. It could be a while before we know who wins the Keystone State. It could be days or weeks, perhaps, before we know what happens in Pennsylvania. Um, it didn't begin to process their mail-in vote until today. They've also got some counties that they won't even begin counting until Wednesday. They're going to go through the day of vote 
in Pennsylvania, and then in those seven counties, they'll start opening envelopes and beginning the mail-in vote. I'm more optimistic. It is not, however, <laughs> too early to call the winners in a dozen other contests, including the District of Columbia. In fact, let's start with our nation's capital, liberal stronghold. Biden will easily defeat uh, President Trump, according to our Fox News voter analysis. Not surprisingly, Biden's home state of Delaware will also vote decisively for the former vice president. Biden will also coast to victory in Massachusetts, according to our Fox News uh, decision desk. And the reliably blue state of Rhode Island will also be added to the Biden column tonight. Ditto for Connecticut, where the former vice president will coast to victory as well. Biden will also prevail in Illinois, where the president has long railed against the violence in Chicago. He will also pick up the perennially blue state of Maryland, according to the decision desk. And finally, Joe Biden will win the state of New Jersey. So a big blue run for him in those states, none of which are surprises tonight. President Trump also racks up some electoral votes at this hour. The Fox News decision desk can now project that Trump will easily win the state of Alabama. We're also watching a Senate race there. The president will also prevail in Mississippi, according to the Fox News voter analysis. You will not be shocked to learn that the Republican president will breeze past his Democratic challenger in the state of Tennessee. Fox can also project that President Trump will win Missouri, which has now voted Republican in six consecutive presidential contests. The president will also beat Joe Biden in Oklahoma, according to our decision desk. One of the few states where we cannot project a winner at this hour is New Hampshire, where we need to analyze more voting data before making a call in the Granite State. Finally, let's turn to Maine, one of the two states that does the winner-take-all does use the winner-take-all method for allocating electoral votes. Uh, they do not, actually. They split out one. Our decision desk can now project that Joe Biden will win three of Maine's four electoral votes. But again, there's another one that's split out. We don't have enough data yet to determine the winner of Maine's second congressional district, which represents the state's fourth electoral vote. That importance of that one vote really could loom large if the natural, national electoral contest comes down to the wire. The other one that splits it out, Nebraska. So Maine is also a state that has a very closely watched Senate race at this hour. Republican Senator Susan Collins is trying to fend off a challenge from Democrat Sarah Gideon in a race that could help determine overall control of the Senate. It is too early to make a projection on that race at the moment. The other big Senate race of the hour is in Alabama, where incumbent Democrat Doug Jones faces a strong challenge from Republican Tommy Tuberville. Too early to call that contest, which if Tuberville prevails, could be the first Senate flip of the night, and that would leave them with only three uh, pickups in the future if they were to do that. And there you see the balance of power. Fox News can project that Republicans will keep their Senate seats in Tennessee and Oklahoma, while Democrats will keep their Senate seats in Illinois, Maryland, New Jersey, and Delaware. All of the other Senate races in the states where the polls have now closed are still too early or close to call. Uh, the same for gubernatorial races. We'll bring you uh, any surprises in that as we get them. So let's take a look at the electoral map right now. You've got 56 for President Trump, 91 for Joe Biden. It's almost as if, you know, you're playing the what-if game, and we're easily starting to fill in some of the ones that you punch in that are givens, essentially, across the map. And the battleground states, obviously, are, are going to be blank for some time this evening. Um, it's all, if we could just pull up North Carolina and Ohio again, just to demonstrate what we were talking about earlier uh, tonight about how some of these states are going to look very red or very blue early on in the evening, but we're still waiting for more data, obviously, to come in in these places because the mail-in vote leaned heavily towards Biden and the walk-in vote today um, is, you can see, 65 to 31 in North Carolina and we'll get Ohio up there as well, but this is where we want to be cautious. Right, and you see less than 1% of the precincts in, you see the numbers on the screen, and in the states that we can make a projection, that's based on our voter analysis and where our decision desk knows that state's going to go. Yeah, we've got a call real quick. Stand by, Tucker. Uh, President Trump will win the state of Indiana, home state to Vice President Mike Pence. Uh, we can make that call. The Fox News decision desk uh, projecting that he, the president, will win Indiana. It is now 8.30 p.m. on the East Coast and 7.30 p.m. in Arkansas, the only state where polls close at this point in the evening. Fox News Decision Desk can now project that President Trump will easily defeat former Vice President Joe Biden in the state of Arkansas. Also, polls have now belatedly closed in North Carolina. 
a must-win state for the president if he's to secure another term. Democrats hope to turn this reliably state blue, red state blue, I should say, this year, although it's too early to determine whether those efforts will succeed. We're also watching the North Carolina Senate race, which could help determine the balance of power, whether Republicans keep control in the Senate. Republican incumbent Tom Till is facing a strong challenge from Democrat Cal Cunningham, too early to call that race. Back to Arkansas, we can now project that Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton, who some believe will run for the Republican presidential nomination in 2024, uh, can do so if he chooses from the comfort of his Senate seat. That's because tonight Cotton will win re-election, easily beating a libertarian challenger, Ricky Dale Harrington. Okay, let's look at the state of Florida. That We're getting a separation here in Florida that seems to be going Donald Trump's way. Again, 29 electoral votes in. Uh, for Florida, 88% of the precincts in. And if you look at the map, it keeps on populating. But the separation here could get to three points. If you look at some of these uh, counties, for example, Palm Beach County, um, and obviously the president calls that home, 56-43, uh, and just look back at 2016, what the spread was, 57-42. So it's kind of tracking there. But some of these other counties in the I-4 corridor, uh, you see tr Donald Trump running up the lead. Uh, and I, I think we might be getting close on Florida yep. because the Trump people rightly said that they felt comfortable with it. All right, a Fox News election alert. We want to give you the probability in these states. Remember what we talked about at the beginning of our broadcast. And the probability meter takes into account the voter analysis survey plus the raw vote total that's coming in. Our decision desk in Florida can say that Florida is 93% a probability, not a certainty, that it's going to go to Donald Trump. They haven't made the call as of yet. Flip that over to North Carolina, where we are still getting the vote coming in, 89% probability for Biden in North Carolina, and that is really worth digging into about what is happening in the state of North That's Carolina. That's 73% in. And it is now 9 p.m. on the East Coast, and the polls have just closed in 14 states across the country. Several of these are considered crucial battlegrounds for whoever will win the White House. Let's start tonight with Arizona, a state that could make or break President Trump's bid for a second term, although the president spent the last eight months trailing Joe Biden in Arizona's pre-election polls. He did manage to close that gap in the campaign's final days. Still, as of this moment, our decision desk has no decision to announce on the Grand Canyon state. Nor can we make a call in Texas. Uh, Democrats have been trying to turn Texas blue for several presidential cycles. A win by Joe Biden tonight uh, would obviously be devastating to Trump's campaign. The Trump campaign thinks they can pull that out in Texas, but it might be close. And then there's the upper Midwest, which played such an important role in President Trump's ups upset victory over Hillary Clinton back in 2016. Three states from that region are up for grabs at this hour, which Democrats uh, are ahead in, in all three at this moment, according to the Fox News voter analysis, although it's too early to project the winners in Wisconsin, where pre-election polls favored Joe Biden, although it should be remembered that they incorrectly showed Clinton winning four years ago. Michigan, where President Trump barely squeaked a victory than candidate Trump in 2016, and Minnesota, where Trump narrowly lost in 2016, and they invested some time in Minnesota this time around. We can, however, project that President Trump will beat Joe Biden in Kansas, based on our voter analysis tonight. And the Republican president will also defeat his Democratic challenger in the state of Louisiana. In Nebraska, one of two states that does not use a winner-take-all method for allocating electoral votes, Trump will win four of the state's five electoral votes there, too early to project a presidential winner in Nebraska's second congressional district, which represents the last electoral vote. Remember, Maine's the other one. We still haven't called that other congressional district there either. And similarly, conservative Wyoming, President Trump will rack up another easy victory there. And the story is the same in North Dakota, where the president comes out on top. And unsurprisingly... Trump also wins South Dakota. In New York, the Fox News decision desk can project that Joe Biden will cruise to an easy victory over President Trump in a place that he used to call his hometown. He calls Florida home now. Biden will, all, I mean, yes, Biden will also win the state of Colorado, according to our decision desk there, but too early to project a winner in New Mexico, where Biden enjoyed strong support 
in pre-election polling. All right, let's turn now to the Senate races where polls have just closed. The first state, Colorado, where our decision desk can now project that Democratic Governor John Hickenlooper, the former governor there, will oust Republican Senator Cory Gardner in the first Senate flip of the night. Remember, Republicans or Democrats need four net or three and the White House to take over control. This is one net in the Democrats' column. Another closely watched Senate race is the special election in Arizona, where Republican Senator Martha McSally faces a strong challenge from Democrat Mark Kelly, a former astronaut. Kelly currently has a lead over McSally, but again, it's too early to call that race. Similarly, Michigan Senator Gary Peters, a Democrat, is ahead of Republican John James, although it is too early to project a winner in that race. Finally, Fox projects that Republicans will keep Senate seats in Nebraska and Wyoming. Whew, made it through that one. Uh, the Fox News Decision Desk can now project that Democrats will retain control of the House of Representatives and expand their majority by at least five seats. That's a major boost for Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who has pledged to roll back much of President Trump's first term agenda if he loses reelection. So the Fox News decision desk, uh, minus Chris Dyerwalt for just a minute, has made some decisions that we want to share with you. President Trump will defeat former Vice President Joe Biden in the state of South Carolina tonight decisively. And a big one, Fox News can also project that Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina will win re-election by defeating Democratic challenger Jamie Harrison, who managed to throw a scare into Graham, a big one, during a hard-fought campaign. Uh, Lindsey Graham will not say his website on any more <laughs> interviews. Uh, he has managed to hold off and will win in South Carolina, and that is a big thing for the Republicans. It is 10 o'clock here in New York City. Polls have just closed in another four states. Let's start with Iowa, where President Trump is locked in a close race with former Vice President Joe Biden. According to our decision desk, it's too early to project a winner in Iowa. The other state we're watching very closely at this hour is Nevada, where our vote analysis shows Biden ahead of Trump at the moment, although we'll need to analyze a lot more data from Nevada uh, before making a call there. Meanwhile, President Trump is ahead of the former vice president in a pair of western states. The first is Utah, home to Republican Senator Mitt Romney, and a frequent, is a frequent Trump critic, as we well know. And the other is Montana, a traditional Republican stronghold. Our decision desk still not quite ready to declare winners in either of those states yet tonight. So if we look at our electoral map, where it stands right now, and our lovely standing candidates, uh, it is 129 to 109. Remember that 270 is the magic number to win the presidency. And you see those yellow states. Obviously, those have closed, uh, but we have not called them yet. And that is where this race is really being battled. Uh, we have North Carolina. We have Florida that we haven't call called yet, although uh, Donald Trump has a big lead now in Florida. Yeah. Welcome back. On your screen, a look at where this race stands at this hour in Florida. Take a look there. 91% of the precincts in Donald Trump, 51.3% to 47.8%. In Georgia, there you go, 56% of the precincts in, and you see Donald Trump. Again, some of that other vote, as we talked about, and then North Carolina, a very close race there in North Carolina, but 91% of the precincts in. Again, all of those too early to call at this hour. And let's take a look at the overall electoral map as it stands right now in the race to 270. Joe Biden at 129, President Trump at 109, and you see the percentage there, 48.2 to 50.2 as we point stand. Three. Point three. As we stand uh, this evening, uh, things are changing by the second at 10:22. The Fox News Decision Desk can now project that President Trump will defeat former Vice President Joe Biden in the state of Utah. Not really a surprise there, but it ticks up into the president's column as we go towards 270. Uh, we are watching a lot of states that are kind of on the bubble here. And we're also looking at our voter analysis surveys that, that talk to about 150,000 Americans around the country. So the Fox News Decision Desk can now project that former Vice President Joe Biden will defeat President Trump in New Hampshire. Let's put that up and uh, see the impact of that on the overall numbers here. 
Biden 53 percent, 44 percent. As we take a look at the big picture here, you've got President Trump with 115, uh, Joe Biden with 133. You know, New Hampshire was a state that the president lost by just close to 3,000 votes last time around. And we've talked about this, but there, there were a number of states that the uh, early on the Trump team was looking at as places that they could turn into Trump states, places like New Mexico, Nevada, places like Minnesota and New Hampshire. Um, so this is the first one of those four that we're seeing tonight, and it's clear that Joe Biden is very comfortably holding the lead, even more so than Hillary Clinton. And you think about Donna Shalala, who was the former Secretary of Health and Human Services, and then she's a congresswoman. Uh, she lost her seat tonight, the Democrat. Um, and Maria Salazar, the Republican challenger, is going to pick up that seat. Now, can they replicate that kind of support from Latinos and Cubans from that Miami-Dade area across other places? You know, possibly so. And that could be a big difference maker between when some of these states come down to the wire like they are. A very relieved Senator Lindsey Graham speaking about his victory, uh, reaching out a hand to his opponent, Jamie Harrison, who spent $103 million that went into that race on his behalf. It is now 11 o'clock on the East Coast. The polls have just closed in four more states. The Fox News decision desk can now project that former Vice President Joe Biden will decisively beat President Trump in California, which uh, is a 55 uh, electoral vote haul. Huge number there. Joe Biden will also win the adjacent state of Oregon, according to our Fox News voter analysis. Rounding out the Pacific Northwest, Biden will defeat uh, Trump in the state of Washington. But in next door, Idaho, President Trump will easily defeat the former vice president. Mm -hmm. I'm going to interrupt you. Sure. We're going to make a, a big call oh. right here. Uh, the Fox News decision desk can now project that President Donald Trump will win the state of Florida, 29 electoral votes. Uh, and he will win, win it convincingly. Absolutely. 51.3 uh, and 47.8 for President Trump and Joe Biden, respectively. Joe Biden spent a fair amount of time in Florida. The president put a huge press in Florida, uh, spent a lot of time there. It's his home state, as he refers to it these days, uh, with his home there in Palm Beach. We've seen a great turnout uh, for him among seniors. Among Hispanic voters, very strong uh, support for the president among Cuban Americans. A lot has been said about his effort to reach them with uh, stories about socialism and the prospect for a more socialistic government in this country, something that resonated quite a bit with uh, Venezuelan and Cuban uh, residents in the state of Florida. So, it, you know, it's obviously a very interesting dichotomy, the state of Florida, Brett, as you take a look at it. And it is a real cross-section of Americans. So many people move from New York there. So many people move from all over the country there. Uh, and it's very representative in many ways. Uh, we started this talking about Senate races. And <laughs> um, before we had the Florida call, which is a big call, but again, doesn't change the dynamic where we thought it was going to go. Uh, nobody's taken one that's a surprising uh, stop. I, the National Republican Senatorial Committee is saying, uh, Britt, that they right now are outperforming their modeling going in. And so they are looking at races like North Carolina optimistically. They are looking at races like Susan Collins in Maine optimistically, even though it's early. And even... and. Here we go. We can, we can make a projection. The Fox News decision desk can project that Republican Tommy Tuberville will unseat Democrat Senator Doug Jones of Alabama, the first and possibly only Republican pickup of a Senate seat tonight. Alabama, remember, this is the Jeff Sessions seat that he was trying to get back, lost to Tuberville in the primary. And that evens out uh, the Cory Gardner loss in Colorado and leaves us uh, at square one in terms of moving that balance of power in the Senate. We can also now project Louisiana Republican Senator Bill Cassidy has won his reelection as well. And Not a surprise there. Race. So you're looking at the net gain, and it was plus one for Democrats. Now it is back to zero. And again, they need to pick up three plus the White House or a net gain of four seats to take over control of the Senate. All right, so let's take a look at, who do we have? Do we have Bill Hammer up there? Sure do. 
Hello there, Bill. <laughs> sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I know, this is a voice from above in the balcony. We have a very good social yeah. distance with you, my friend. Yeah, what I love listening to you guys. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> but I tell you, there's some phenomenal things happen on this map, guys. Something's moving out there. I don't know if it sticks. I don't know if it stays, but I'm going to show you. I left off a moment ago before we went to Lindsey Graham. Sorry about that, but I was talking about blue-collar Democrats. This is Mahoning County. This is Youngstown, Ohio. This is steel country America, and Donald Trump has just taken a lead over Joe Biden. And the point I was trying to make earlier was that if these blue-collar Democrats in this part of the upper Midwest are still with Donald Trump, then the rest of the map might shake out to be in his favor, maybe in Pennsylvania. I'll put that to the side. But here's what we're seeing in Michigan, <clears throat> all right? Michigan had a poll from, I, I believe it was ABC the other day, that uh, Donald Trump was down seven. Well, you've got almost half the vote in right now, and Donald Trump has a clear lead at the moment. Got a ways to go right now, not even quite halfway. Uh, pop over here to Wisconsin. I was listening to Dana talk about, you know, um, mothers and suburbs and kids and uh, law and order in America. Uh, two points I want to make here. You got 60% of the vote counted in Wisconsin. All right, the president's got a four-point lead. This is a very, very close race. 2016, the outcome in Wisconsin, I mean, that was razor thin. It was 22,000 votes. So uh, he, he is, my point is, he is in um, this part of the country in a significant way. He is right in that battle. Uh, this is Milwaukee down here. I mentioned a moment ago, just to check in right now. Joe Biden's expected to win this county, but we don't know what the margin will be. So keep an eye on that. This is Kenosha. Not a ton of votes, but here's the point to be made here. Law and order. Now, that was the message he was taking out here. You saw the protests in Kenosha. You saw the rioting and the looting. Uh, the president at the moment is, is turning two to one over Joe Biden. What's that tell us? In 2016, he barely won Kenosha. In 2012, this is how far this state and this county has moved. 56% in 2012 for Barack Obama. Just come to this year and... Uh, he's going to easily win this county. It's not a ton of votes, but it's a point to be made about the message that he has carried to the upper Midwest. I, um, I'll just show you this right here. This is the what-if scenario that we've been, I mean, Brett, Martha, I mean, how many times we've been looking at this thing, right, for months. You know, I, how do you get the 270? Uh, well, we called Florida. Uh, right now he's got a lead in Georgia, a lead in North Carolina, a lead in Ohio. I just showed you Michigan and Wisconsin. You wonder if he can, if you can turn the trick tonight with Pennsylvania being off the board. I just checked the voting in Iowa. Joe Biden has a lead there, but again, it looks like it's one of those um, you lead with blue, then you come back later with red. Uh, I think there is there's one clear concern on behalf of the Trump campaign at the moment, uh, and that is Arizona. If you look at the numbers right now and drill down, Joe Biden has a lead by about seven points with three quarters of the vote tabulated. I am told that some of the uh, some of the rural votes for Donald Trump have not yet come in, uh, but he's got some ground to make up. 11 electoral votes on the line in Arizona. So if Joe Biden were able to hold on to this, and he's doing pretty well in Maricopa County so far, a lead by 10 points, by comparison, say four years ago, Donald Trump won Phoenix and he won Maricopa County. Maybe there's still some more votes out there uh, at this late hour, but right now, uh, Joe Biden has a lead. So just go ahead and come back here to the what if scenario. You try to, I don't want to start ticking these off yet, guys. I think it's too early. I haven't made a lot of calls in some of the states, so I'll refrain from that for now. But what is this happening here? Why is Arizona blue? Did we just call it? Did we make a call in Arizona? Well, let's see. Now, there's a check mark. Did our decision desk make it? Arizona, 11 electoral votes. Yes, it, we can. Con okay, if I that's the case, then guys, a, yeah. uh, when we come back, we'll fill this in. If you lose Arizona, where do you win now? You got to win up here in Wisconsin and Michigan and maybe even Minnesota in order to pull this out. And that's leaving Pennsylvania off the map. And I'll leave that with you guys. Okay, time out. This is a big development. Yeah. The Fox News decision desk is calling Arizona for Joe Biden. That is a big get for the Biden campaign. It's also signals that it's a good night for Mark Kelly, the Democratic Senate candidate against Mar Martha McSally there. 
But Biden picking up Arizona changes the math, and it is the first of the night that goes into the column of somebody else's bucket that they thought last time uh, was going to hold on to Arizona. There was a lot of effort spent by the Trump campaign uh, to get to Arizona, to play there, to have ads there. And we are calling now the former vice president. If you look at the race to 270 electoral votes, Joe Biden is ticking closer at 218 to 148. And it breaks apart that Sun Belt strategy. Uh, if you've got Arizona going to Biden and Florida, at least, is the one that we know of so far in the rest of that Sun Belt uh, area. Uh, we also have called Mark Kelly over Martha McSally in that race uh, in Arizona as well. And just to mention one of the dynamics in Arizona, just one of many, but Cindy McCain uh, came out in favor of Joe Biden, her close friend. Uh, this is obviously a state that has been very purpley, sent Kristen Sinema uh, to the Senate as well in a tight race. You know, for, for Martha McSally, she was appointed to that post twice. Um, and she has not won an election uh, to be a senator of the United States now. So that is worth mentioning as well. Mark Kelly, the former astronaut, uh, has secured that. So seat again, that is a pickup for the Democrats. We just went to zero. Now it is a net plus one. Uh, we need to digest Arizona, which mm. is a big deal. Okay, Shannon, thank you. Uh, we have another call to make, and that is in the presidential race, the state of New Mexico. Will we can now project? Will go to former Vice President. Joe Biden. So that's five electoral votes uh, for Biden. If we look at the race for 270, I think we can get it up here, and that is 223 to 148. New Mexico, not a surprise. Arizona, again, was possibly in the red column. We have a couple other uh, calls to make in the Senate races. Yeah, with John Cornyn in Texas. Let's take a look at that. Uh, this is the race. Uh, MJ Hagar ran against him. 44% to 53%. At one point, that looked like a close race. I think one of the storylines tonight is about Texas, which we've been told up and down was a possible flip. Uh, Kamala Harris was there just a couple of days ago. A lot of sort of uh, excitement around the fact that perhaps Texas was in play. And at least in John Cornyn's race, it does not turn out uh, to be the situation. We're waiting, of course, for the rest of Texas uh, to come in tonight, but John Cornyn has secured his seat. Which bodes well for President Trump in Texas. Then you look at Mississippi, to your point, Britt, uh, the Republican there, Cindy Hyde-Smith, winning there a, a stiff challenge uh, from the Democrat, Espy, who there was a lot of money spent on this race in Mississippi, and there was a hope on the Democrats that they could pull this off. They haven't, but that does not change the net gain. If you look again, uh, right now, D plus one, and that largely is uh, Mark Kelly in Arizona, which we just called. Democrats need four to take control of the Senate, and we'll see the races in Maine, again, Michigan, and we've got a lot to look look at as you see the population uh, tick up there, 45-44. Okay. We wouldn't have made it. I'm going to interrupt you. Fox News, the decision desk, including Chris Starwalt, can now call the state of Ohio for President Trump. That is 18 electoral votes in the state of Ohio, hard-fought votes. The president needed this. You can't get to the White House. A Republican couldn't without Ohio. He now wins Ohio. So, Chris, there you go. I mean, just having you on we uh, make produced it this result. We get results. Yeah, the Trump what, people are bullish right, right now. now. They're bullish on Wisconsin, but we got a big call to make yeah, here. We do, do it, Bill. Um, all right, we can now call Texas for the president of the United States. Uh, this is a state that I think nobody expected uh, would be as close as it is tonight, 46 percent to 52 percent. But the president has now claimed Texas, which is definitely one of the states that he won last time that he needed to win tonight. And he has achieved that goal, 38 electoral votes in the state of Texas, despite the fact that Beto O'Rourke and others uh, were very hopeful that the tide was changing in Texas. It has held once again well, uh, it for is, the Republican president. It is changing. The electorate in Texas is changing. The fact that it was this close and it yeah. took us this long yep. to call it. But there you see the race to 270, 223 to 204 now with the big haul of Texas in President Trump's column. As we head to break here, let's check in on a couple of Senate races. One, Michigan, we just talked about, and we've been mentioning throughout the night, uh, John James against the incumbent, Gary Peters. Let's take a look at that board, maybe. Um, we'll get it. And in that race, there you see uh, John James holding a lead now. It's only half of the precincts in. 
We also want to check one more on the Senate races. Maine, uh, Susan Collins at 52.1, and Sarah Gideon, 41%. Obviously, a lot of money's gone into this race as well. Susan Collins trying very hold, hard to hold on to her seat in Maine. That's a quick look at some of those hot Senate races as we head to a break. We'll be right back. Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, it's past midnight. We should point that out. Uh, and we do have a call there. Hawaii, no surprise, is going to former Vice President Joe Biden. Uh, so those uh, electoral votes go into his column. Sorry. You produce <laughs> you and Steyerwall whenever you're on. Fox News Decision Desk can make a call. And that is Iowa for President Trump. He will win the state of Iowa, the six electoral votes in Iowa. Um, that was tight at, uh, as you got towards Election Day. He will win Iowa, and uh, Joni Ernst is there as well. We haven't made a call in that race yet. Okay. I, I would just point out that it's a seven-point spread, exactly what the Des Moines Register said it Bingo. would be uh, it, just a couple of days ago. So once again, there is a pollster out there that uh, is, doing, is doing a good job tonight. Yeah. Uh, that's, listen, right? There you go. Right, Keep talk. talking. Uh, there's Every that Senate race. Keep it, talking. It's magic. If we uh, talk about it, um, <laughs> we're able to call it. So that's Joni Ernst, uh, over 51%. Teresa Greenfield gave her a good run for her money. That was a very tight race. Um, and Joni Ernst has secured her spot in the United States Senate and her seat for the Republicans. Well, let's as look they at the, look uh, to hold on to the, majority. the net gain, uh, the 5347 we started with. The Senate board now yeah. uh, with that win. That's a hold, obviously. So Republicans holding that seat, and uh, it's still a net gain of one for Democrats if you put Mark Kelly out yeah. there in, in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we do have another call to make, and that is a major call to announce. The Fox News Decision Desk can now project that former Vice President Joe Biden will defeat President Trump in the key battleground state of Minnesota. Uh, there was some hope in the Trump campaign that they could pull out uh, Minnesota was very close uh, last time around in 2016, uh, but the decision desk now calling Minnesota for Joe Biden. Yeah, that uh, was one that Amy Klobuchar has obviously spoken a lot about, very near and dear to her heart, her home state. She said that she felt very confident that Minnesota would stay in the blue column, and indeed it has. So these are the numbers that we're at right now, 237 now on the path to 270 for Joe Biden. Uh, and the president is at 210 at this point with a lot of states out there still to call. Okay, let's bring in Arnon Mishkin, director of the Fox News Decision Desk. Arnon, uh, we're getting a lot of incoming here, and we need you to answer some questions. Um, Arizona, Shoot. are you 100% sure of that call and when you made it, and why did you make it? Absolutely. We've made it after basically a half hour of debating, is it time yet? Because it was, it's, it's been clear for a while that the former vice president is in, in the lead in Arizona and was most likely to, to win the state. It has been in the category that we call knowable but not callable for about an hour. Um, we finally called it. Right now, um, yes, there are some outstanding votes in Arizona. Most of them are coming from Maricopa, where, where Biden is currently in a very strong position. And many of them are mail-in votes, where we know from our Fox News voter analysis, Biden has an advantage. We don't know exactly how many mail-in votes there are. But what I think we've heard from the White House is that um, they are expecting to get that they need just to get 61 percent of the outstanding vote and they'll and there are 870,000 outstanding votes and they'll be getting that. That's not true. Uh, the reality is that they're likely to get only about 44 percent of the outstanding votes there are there. We're right now sitting on a race that is um, Biden at 53 percent, Trump at 46 percent. I'm sorry, the president is not going to be able to take over and win enough votes to eliminate that seven point lead that the former vice president has. Yeah, uh, they have said that they believe that he will get 65 percent of the outstanding votes, which they claim are at a million to 1.1 million. You're saying that the universe of votes that's still out there is much lower than that? We think the universe of votes is out, uh, outstanding is lower than that, and we believe that, I'm sorry, he's not getting anywhere near 65 percent of that. And that's why we made this call. I mean, this, this is a call that's sitting in our statistical models at sort of uh, at a T stat of four or more in all the different ways we uh, well, speak uh, in English. What does that yeah, mean? Sorry, well, that means we're four standard deviations from being wrong. 
And I'm sorry, we're not wrong in this particular case. Okay, well, let's bounce around just a little bit, Arnon, since we sure. have you here. Let's go to North Carolina. We're looking live in Wilmington, Delaware, waiting on the motorcade and the former vice president to say something, as Chris was talking about there. But let's talk about North Carolina and where we are. It seems like this is a very tight race. Uh, where, where are you seeing that? Uh, it is a tight race. The uh, president seems to have an advantage in North Carolina. Um, a couple of, uh, about a half hour ago, it looked like he had even, even greater advantage. Um, the question in North Carolina that we have is how much vote is really outstanding? How much of that vote is mail-in versus election day? Because the interesting thing about this election is it's not just about figuring out how much Joe Biden is getting and how much Donald Trump is getting. It's also about how people are voting because what we saw, what we've seen today is that the people who voted by mail or voted early tend in, by a huge number tended to be Democratic. The people who voted on Election Day tended to be Republican. North Carolina is one of those states where they count the uh, early vote uh, first to a certain extent and they count a bunch of it l late. Um, but right now we're sitting at something where d uh, the president has an advantage in the state, but it's not yet at a callable advantage, and that's why we haven't called it. All right, while we have you, let's take a look at Georgia as well, Arnon. Let's put that up on the screen. What are you seeing in Georgia? It looks like the president has a very solid lead with 83% of the vote in. Is this yes, Fulton no, no, Georgia is on? one of those states that's, that's, that's close, and, and there's a debate going on. It really can, uh, is there any path for Joe Biden to get the, the, the lead in Georgia? And so far, uh, we do not, it's not, it's not clear there is a path. Um, it's a, it's a, a state that could easily fall into the president's camp um, shortly. Are you um, a T3 there, or? How many you want me to check? check? I can try to bring my computer game. down I mean, here. If you want me to check, I will. I mean, how confusing do you want me to be? No, no, no. I just <laughs> want, wait, we're watching the motorcade uh, arriving there, um, and the horns are honking. I, we're close, you're saying, to Georgia. In, in Georgia, I would say we're close, yes. Okay, let's go to Michigan while we have you. Michigan and Wisconsin. Mi and let's just start in Michigan. Okay. What, where, what are you saying? Uh, the president is in the lead in Michigan. Um, we believe that what we're looking at right now is heavily election day vote, where in Michigan the president did extremely well, according to our Fox News voter analysis. What's outstanding is a lot of the early and mail-in vote, which count gets counted late later. And that's why this is a state where it's really sort of a much cl the final result is likely to be much closer. And yes, in this case, I think uh, the former vice president has a, cha has a much better chance than he has in, say, Georgia. Even though Georgia looks, uh, you know, uh, roughly the same in terms of the, the top line, um, in terms of what's actually going to happen, it's, it's different. And Wisconsin? Uh, do you have the, the top yeah, line? Yeah, we have there? the top line in Wisconsin, uh, which has the president up. Hold on one second. 51.5. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, the president is up in these. In our models, that's not the way it's looking right now. It, it, this is a state where, if you ask me to, the probabilities based on the models that, and the vote we're seeing and the way it's being counted, um, the former vice president has a fairly good chance of uh, prevailing in Wisconsin. So when you look ahead at the next hour or two, how do you believe that you're going to be able to call uh, Georgia or North Carolina? Or do you think that those are going to be until tomorrow? What's your outlook? Uh, we are hoping to be able to call at least one of those southern states this evening. I do not know about the Rust Belt states, and my team would kill me if I started, if I went right. further. They're emailing you to get off the air right now. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or it's Carl Rove. Um, last thing, Pennsylvania. Uh, I think we're going to hear from the former vice president about his performance in Lackawanna County, as Chris Wallace suggested, um, and the Scranton area. Where is Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania is a state that could easily take several days to count the mail-in vote. We believe there was a lot of mail-in vote. We believe, you know, that, that it's one of those states where you, it can arrive a few days late so far, according to the decisions. Um, but it's possible that this, this is a state where you need, to do, you need to do two things. One, you need to get all the decision teams to agree who has won the state. But, and, you know, the, the, you need to get the arithmetic right. But the second is that this is a state that could easily fall into serious litigation. Um, but this is also a state where, you know, this is, this is one of those states where we knew from the get-go, and we talked about it at the five earlier today, that this was a state where we anticipated that the 
election day vote would be reported very early. We anticipated a solid Trump lead in early votes, and we suggested don't pay that much attention to the raw vote initially because that could change. The same thing was true in the South, but the reverse, where we said don't pay attention to the likelihood of a uh, uh, blue mirage, or uh, you know that Joe Biden would be doing really well in, in many of the southern states, including Florida, um, uh, nor frankly North Carolina, Georgia, and um, so far Florida obviously fell to the the president. But the path to 270, when you look at it for President Trump, and you look at it for former Vice President Biden. The path to 270 for the president is to make sure he wins Georgia and North Carolina, the, the outstanding ones in the South, and then that he, man he gets probably Pennsylvania uh, and Montana. Um, and I believe then he gets over 270, the, um, or he, he gets barely, and then he probably also will need to win either Wisconsin or Michigan. That's the path. The path for Joe Biden is win Nevada, win Wisconsin, win Michigan, and I think that, and win either uh, Nebraska too, which is still outstanding, and where Biden currently has a lead, or win Maine too, which is also outstanding, but where currently Trump has a lead. Okay. Can we finish where we started on Arizona? <laughs> yeah. You're a hundred percent sure. Yes. And so all this pushback, you're going to say, we made the right call when we made it. We made the correct call, and that's why we made the correct call when we made it. I'm sorry. No, you don't have to be sorry. We just want to be. <laughs> we well, just want to make sure you're sure. The, the oh, president yeah. is not happy. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Arna. We appreciate Arnie. your time. Thank Get you. Get back in me. there so we can make some more calls. Uh, yes, Chief. <laughs> Thanks, Arna. Bye. The president has weighed in on on Twitter. We are up big, but they are trying to steal the election. We will never let them do it. Votes cannot be cast after the polls are closed. We do have a call uh, that is the Fox News decision desk can say that Montana will go into the column of President Trump. Three electoral votes. So as you look at the race to 270. And Brett. Hold on, Brett. Uh, we'll just add up these numbers. 237 to 213. Yeah. 